Good night, Nashville Legends. We're Gang of Views from Sydney via London. You're listening to WNXP, I believe. I got that right. And uh, if you have an animal that you love, hold them close. Uh, is that? One, two, three. From our world upwards The angels took their place I was a loser at your funeral With no emotion conveyed And it was thrown out in vain The idiot I am Just figured in the wake of your lean That I'd never hear from you again And then I'd say With all this feeling now That your spirit would afford my hand on heart It's not a thing that I've been dreaming of And it goes without my blessing It leads me to run But it comes and goes it Shows me all I'm missing And it comes and it goes All right I was there in the backstage Crying all over the words they never came I was available for a statement But I just hung my head in shame It felt nothing to me All the ceremony I'd waste in the night Thank them and leave And say God bless you all, good night And then I'd think The grave was turning all right And then nothing would absorb my hair on heart It's not a thing that I've been dreaming of And it throws me without warning It leaves me in the dust But it comes and goes It fills me when I'm empty Then it comes and it goes And I will need it when it's gone Quakes and moves and breaks and shatters over me and shapes of all these quiet sacred things I need. My hair on heart, and there's a line of something in these songs that are worthy of some mention. You're free to let me know, but it comes in. It fills me when I'm empty Then it comes and it goes All right My hair on heart It's not a thing that I've been dreaming of And it goes without my blessing It leaves me in a row Then it comes and goes It holds me when I'm sleepless Then it comes and it shows I will need you when you go. Uh, that song is about uh, a bunch of shit that I can't remember on the spot. No, it's about um, uh, the weird uh, feeling of being at my dad's funeral. And wondering if I was ever gonna um, be able to connect with him in a real way. Uh, and the next song is about how I met my wife in New York City, the Big Apple. I don't know why they call the Big Apple. Do you know? What? He's from Chicago. What do they call Chicago? The Windy City. The Windy City. They do. I would have thought the the medium sized pear. Pears are much sweeter fruit. I think. I believe. What's that? Uh, I 
got straight to the heart And I was a coward and worse to my shame I fell hard upon the weightless weeks And I wasted everything So you emerged in the park Like some patron of Washington Square The first time in a long time As I had everything stood clear Went out to find me a job But I didn't think I would hold this one down It gives the same old sinking feeling Of fucking hammers in my back But you are good to me still When my old man was near to the end He loved his broken body In the same way that I did I wanna lay me down And be a lover of the year In this strange new town A strange hemisphere God, it was state of the art You called each of my sorrows my name In a tide of tender mercy Shook my body from the grave And in the festival years Of all makeshift parade In perpetual fall In immeasurable rain I want to see this one out I want to join the impossible swing I fall hard beside you screaming at The bowels of everything In the Islington Moor The angel of aid And what's more, the goddamn greatest thing The lady ever made I want to lay me down And be a lover of the year And in this strange new town, a strange hemisphere, you persuade me now to look closer in the mirror. And I'm gonna lay me down for years and years and years. Heaven in you now, oh, there's heaven in you now, oh, there's heaven in you now, there's heaven in you now, oh, 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 there's heaven in you now. Oh, this heaven in you now There is heaven in you now Oh, this heaven uh, And this last song, uh, which we're probably not going <laughs> to nail at all <laughs> about how I was a raging piece of shit as a teenager and how very little has changed since then, I think. I have to get a new line about that song that's left self-effacing, I think, maybe. But Let's bat yourself. you got to bat myself. Uh, this song's about forbearance and it's called forbearance because it's about forbearance. Okay. Makes sense that. <laughs> it's just a nice quirky word I thought would make the album titles more interesting. I mean, it's, it's benign and meaningless. Like the band named The National. It doesn't mean anything, but it's a cool name. I shouldn't have referenced that because now everyone thinks that we're ripping them off, which is partially true. He's not the only person to have a deep voice in history, by the way. It's this weird comparison. Oh, this is a national ripoff. I'm sorry. I don't want to. It's so weird. It's just a weird. Sorry. I just. I'm. I'm. I'm happy to air this grievance on fucking whatever this is. Like, I have a deep voice. Um, don't punish me because I sound like that guy. He's a nice man. All right, this song's called Forbearance. Wish us luck. Gods of country music. One, two. It was a gracious old sunshine, but it was wasting on me. I was plastered and counting the cop cars out right in front of me. I was a troublesome young kid. I was a big piece of shit, but I'm hoping that the days in the hospice 
atone for some of it. And if the whole thing was fair, it wouldn't be me that was fighting for it. But it's you and the bear. It's so routine that it just threw me, I guess. And in the cosmic ballet, you can't just do what you fucked up again. And the world is not done with me yet. It was in a dulcimer mood. Around the fourth day of June, I accounted for the miles of attention that I got. We couldn't wait to lose. And on the day when I left, when I said I'd be back, I am sorry. Your face, when you saw me, it was a fame word. And I just wish that I'd said Something more than I'd be back in town And if I went there in time Please take a second to go and kiss you goodbye So I stay by the bed And be some respite for you till the end And the world is not done with me Rise and rise, you great old thing oh. Rise and rise and shine Over the ashtrays are empty it Was hardly a place I could look to for safety It was a high holy weekend The ones you get shit for free at the counter And I'm crying alone now Cause I didn't want them to see But I fell asleep in the bathtub But I woke up in the street I'm a bastion of the unwanted attention that I got I couldn't wait to leave And if the whole thing was fair It wouldn't be me that was fighting for it It made sense in my head but I'm still the asshole down here in the left In the come down afraid Who came to fix what I fucked up today Cause the world is not done with me Thank you WNXP, Windows XP Uh, hey, it's Celia here in the Sonic Cathedral at WNXP with a lovely stripped-down performance from Gang of Youths who are in town for a tour tonight. And welcome, guys. Thank you so much for those beautiful tunes. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Love to be here. Yeah. And uh, I really love that I'll get to see you full band, but this was so nice to hear these songs that we've been playing in this way. So uh, first of all, how's the tour been going? I usually hate touring, but this has been one of the best. I'm sort of like, I'm very reticent about touring because of the strain on my voice and our bodies and I think we're kind of at that age where you know having kids and married and boring um where touring is more of a burden than it is like a blessing I think we've been together me and Jung have been in the band for 11 years so it's sort of you know we've done America so many times to very little fanfare which kind of suited our personalities and now I think it's sort of starting to happen a bit more so but it's been really amazing for us especially driving around the south like that's that's pretty I think so yeah, we had a great day off driving from um, Lerville, which I think, is that the right way to pronounce it? Lerville. Lerville. It's more gutter. Right? <laughs> um, we drove Bourbon down soap. through, uh, what was that town with all the distilleries and stuff? Oh, um, Bard's Town. Bard's Town. Oh, no, no way. Oh, way. We was like, a, okay, tell your dad, tell your dad, to, next time yeah. we're out at Preservation, <laughs> you got to come and tell him to get a drink with us. Oh, it's quality. Preservation especially. Yeah, it's really, really good. We went to Willett. I'm, I'm a bourbon nut, and so I made the boys drive me to there. It's sort of a, like the, the American South, you know, my, my wife's from North Carolina, and I've had a lot of experience in the South, but all of us just really enjoy the iconography and the, 
just the vision of a beautiful America. And then also there's all the weird stuff, but, you know, it's sort of like making your way through the weird stuff and finding all the nice... The town with the massive yeah. furniture, right? Yeah. Oh, we went to this weird, <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird town. The chairs? Yeah. Lad, it was like a fucking... A chest of drawers. It was, it? A, it was a giant chest of drawers. With, yeah, six foot the... fucking socks, almost as tall as me. We just want healthcare. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why do we have... So this whole town was furniture stores. It was, in, it was called High Point, North Carolina. And I, I, it's one of the most bizarre things. And didn't you go to a fake German town? You hear that? We you did, yeah. We went to um, Helen. Oh, Helen, uh, Helen, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that place? No. Well, we, we set off as some wholesome, you know, like trail walking and stuff and jumping in rivers and that. And on the way way there we just came over the brow of this hill and then suddenly we were greeted by this seemingly bavarian town laid out before us um we had we sort of looked at each other and we'll just shrugged our shoulders and carried you're in through. germany now brother but made, made a point of going to him and came back for a stein of beer are you like, lost <laughs> Yeah, I don't so know. Weird. You guys aren't really like touring as hard vibe right now. This seems really fun yeah, and great. So I, yeah. welcome back. Sorry, yeah, the, right. the, the end of that answer was we're having a great time. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> this tour. We'll go off in tangents. Well, I know I did want to ask you about place though, because I guess before this most recent record, you've been settled in London for a minute, right? But I was thinking about when Yola, who's a local now local artist here, um, talked about the transition changing continent. She's a good singer, by the way. Quite good. Maybe. You should watch the session and then she'll watch yours perhaps. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, what, what was that transition like? And now that you've been settled there for a minute, but so much crazy stuff's happened in the world, how, how has relocating from Australia to Europe uh, changed your songwriting or has it, if and how? Um, for me personally, it's, it's sort of a weird thing because I, I was in New York on and off and I'd lived in America before that. Um, so it was, it was less weird to transition from Australia. I feel like I couldn't kind of bring Australia with me, but moving to the UK just gave me more perspective on what it was to be like a settled person a maybe a happier and healthy person not so corrupt by fucking all the um all the self-indulgent melancholic bullshit that i kind of project onto the world through the music um and it just it, you know i think jung's the same like jung's born and raised in chicago but he's lived elsewhere so for us like being itinerant and moving fucking different places isn't isn't weird but london's given us real settlement and security and like a sense of like belonging and um tommy was born there so we all, we all have a really good base there and in terms of how it affected the songwriting i mean just being exposed to like london sounds and london visions you know like a like a beautiful vision of london was able to be injected straight into the music we, we had a studio in east london uh the actual record is named after our old neighborhood angel yeah angel angel real time is named after angel in, in islington in north london and so it sort of um it permeated every every fucking angle of where we were going with the record we wanted it to feel like you know, we're an Australian band. I'm Aussie as shit, you can hear. But <laughs> we wanted it to feel like a uniquely London album. Does that make sense? So yeah, I it does feel that that's, way. Yeah, that's, that's, we try to, I guess, mm. inflict as much <laughs> English iconography as possible, yeah. Definitely, yeah. But, I mean, also interspersed with all the, the other sounds and all the other samples that we've integrated into the, the new record. I think when we moved to England as well, it was just before Brexit had actually kicked in. And so... I kind of took advantage of that to be able to go visit a whole bunch of places in Europe on my own and just even going to a place like Berlin, for instance, and experiencing the underground scene there and how that kind of influence has in a way trickled over into like the parallels between, say, the music scene in Manchester, which we were super influenced by, you know, and uh, how dance culture kind of found its influence into the record as well was kind of really cool too. I don't know, for that to develop and all that. For the record, if we get onto that, how we made the record. I would love to know how you made the record. It'll take like another, another hour. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close Notes version though, about how was it different uh, recording this one and uh, these times? Um, I mean, we I, I was begging for two years off because we'd been touring relentlessly and I just needed, mm. we was um, we was really happy when all that shit got called off, if I'm honest. And the world was suffering and people were suffering. And I think like all we could do is just rent out a little spot and just record and i think it was a it was a more densely collaborative process i think for all of us um i tend to be the, the mouthpiece of the thing because all the all the bullshit comes from the nog but um we we're able to kind of integrate so much of each other's personalities and skill sets into a, into the like the 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 studio environment so to speak mm -hmm. and i think also it was it was more like a patchwork assortment of things that we'd we'd put in the music so i'd hear a, a beautiful um sample recorded by david fanshaw from the pacific my my um you know my ancestral home uh and i'd lay it down and then six weeks later we'd go back to it and then fucking donnie our drummer and our wonderful bass player just put loads and loads of shit down and so that was kind of part of 
the way that we did it in this record, whereas before we'd usually just record live. Uh, you know, before Tommy joined the band, it was like, we have to be a live band. That's what all every fucking cool indie rock band does. And then we realized that that's a lot of shit. And it's all, that's all aesthetically driven nonsense as opposed to like, what's the way that we want to work? And so, yeah, this, this very collaborative, like I said, patchwork assortment of sounds was assembled and layered. And then, you know, it's kind of become this gargantuan thing, you know. Mm. Oh, I love that. Well, speaking of what's in your nog and then coming out, um, you did say, <laughs> I'll try to have an intro less self-effacing, but I get a lot of um, talking to your past self on this newest record. And uh, I wonder if talking to your past self through song is helping you heal that person or forgive him, possibly. <laughs> this is heavy. This just turned into talk <laughs> therapy, but here it is. Um, I, I think Jung, Jung, cause Jung has known me probably the longest. Um, he'd probably argue that I'm a bit hard on myself. Um, I wouldn't, but I think I'm sort of, uh, I believe that if you want to make good work, like anything, you got to kind of turn the gun on yourself, so to speak, and be really brutally honest about all the things about you that are repulsive and you can make good work with that. And I kind of like that. I, I don't, I don't like the idea that somehow like music can be a redemptive process because it's not like your life is a redemptive process and your your music is an extension of humanity which is why i believe that you know you can separate me from the art because i am a fucked up damaged stupid person but the work itself but the, but the, no no but no but like i think all of us are to some extent right i, I think it's weird to argue that you're not um but the but the actual art itself, I believe it's kind of it's it's I believe that there's something um, neutral about that because it, it, there's a there's a process of humanity that goes into creating this thing and then it leaves me by extension and becomes all yours, you know. And I think I think you can ascribe or maybe it's a very like cerebral worded process, but you can ascribe meaning to things um, yourself. You don't have to constantly rely on the context of it. And I think uh, the way of speaking to my past self has been deeply through like deepening my relationships with my friends like having fucking 10 years worth of therapy and shit and you know like re reconnecting with my family and like just being a good husband and trying to be a good bloke um but the work itself i think art art has a a place for me that you know feels um independent of judgment you know like it's it, it should be uh, encouraging to us that broken fucked people like me can make beautiful things like all of us are capable of it. It doesn't really matter who you are. You can be a scumbag and still produce something worth worth listening to. I think that's actually really important. I think that's more important than this kind of neoliberal way of looking at, you know, pieces of art like they're somehow supposed to be redemptive gestures for people. And that's fucking stupid. But that's just me. I'm also not sure, not sure if that's... You might have a hot take. Yeah, maybe. I watched him reach the <laughs> mic up. You were going to like... Well, I mean, I was going to add on to you, but like you didn't have to necessarily release a record about these kinds of things. If you known Dave as long as I have, he can write songs like, I mean, he just turns them out if he really wanted to, but he just had to write about all these personal things that you've been experiencing in the last three years. And like, you didn't have to do that, but you chose to do that. And I think there's something important to say about having choosing to take the harder route. I think in like going through the investigating all this deeper sides of you that you didn't maybe necessarily know so much about and not only just writing about it, but also releasing it, sharing it with the world. And hoping that, like, I don't know, maybe there's someone else yeah. out there that, like, you might have, I don't know, reached out to in a way. Yeah, I think that's actually be part of it. It's not just, it's not just speaking. Like, but you're right. It's not just. It's out of the hope that maybe there's like a 14 year old Islander girl in Sydney, Pacific Islander girl who like wants to make fucking hip hop and hears the shit and like, oh, I can draw on my heritage and my family history and shit. But also, I think like you said something really interesting. For me, it's about speaking to my future self. Like, I don't necessarily, I wasn't, when we released this album, we're like, yeah, people aren't going to get this. Like, we understood that. We're, they're not going to understand the production. They're not going to get the fucking total neurosis that me and Tom especially have gone through uh, to make this thing. They, they're going to think that it's overblown or too much. But it was more of an investment into like, yeah, you're quite not ready for it, but your kids are going to love it. It's called a Marty McFly vibe. I think that was what, I think that was, <laughs> that's Max's back. favorite movie, so I had to reference it. But does that make sense? Yes, it totally does. So yeah, thank you for present tense and for the future folks that will appreciate it. <laughs> And blessings to your past self that uh, brought you here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of your past selves. Thank you guys for being in Nashville and coming to our Sonic Cathedral. And can't wait to see the show, but also have you back here next next go around. Thank Thanks. you, Ben. Thanks, Thanks so much. Shit. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Winners XP. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>